Hello, my beloved brothers and sisters around the world. All of the brothers and sisters from the Church of God, Ministry of Jesus Christ International, I give a very affectionate greeting, desiring the best and hoping that the Lord be with you all and watching and observing and hearing your prayers and pleas so that the Lord may be merciful and extend his hand of power and remove this malice and situation that we are experiencing. The Lord is powerful and love. He is compassion. In He we wait, in He we trust. Blessed is His name. Today, let us reflect in Matthew chapter 15. Let us reflect in a few verses of the Bible what defiles man. Matthew 15, verse 1 through 20. And let us reflect upon and learning the doctrine of the Lord, taking all of this knowledge to our heart to do the will of God, to please our Lord. So the word of our Lord so reads, Matthew, Then the scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus, saying, here, speaking of the scribes, they were the leaders of the people. They were those that taught the law of Moses on Saturday. And the Pharisees, they had a high rank as well during that time regarding the government. And they were the leaders, enemies of our Lord. They followed him in all places to hear what he preached and to criticize him, condemn him, judge him. This is what they did. And to plant the doubt in the believers. This is why the Lord Jesus Christ said that his enemies were the scribes and the Pharisees, said they were hypocrites because the Lord saw their hearts that were false, that they only went to see what Jesus said to accuse him. So it continues that they went to him, to our Lord, there in Jerusalem. And they ask our Lord, why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. That was a tradition, something they had made up, that before eating the bread or eating something, they had to wash their hands. And Lord Jesus answers, why as well do you transgress the commandment of God because of your trend tradition? The Lord as well says, you ask me a question, I as well ask you a question. Why do you as well transgress the commandment of God? Because of your tradition. Because the Lord commanded, saying, honor your father and your mother. He who curses father or mother let him be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever profit you might have received from me is a gift to God. Saying that these persons did not give the aid that was in accordance to their parents. They did not help them in sustaining them, but they said, oh no, what I should give to you, better yet, I will give an offering to God. So I will take this to the temple and I will give it as an offering to the Lord, all that what I should help you with. They did not do one thing or the other, nor did they take the offerings to God to the temple, nor did they give to their parents what they should. But they were saying to their parents, I didn't give you an offering. I didn't bring you food. I didn't bring you money because I gave this all to the offering to the Lord. In this, they were false. They were lying. And they were lying 
about the commandments of the Lord, where the Lord said you have to honor your mother and father, meaning respect them and value them, but as well helping them and supporting them. Because parents being elderly, they could not work and they had to live with what their children give them. But their children were such hypocrites, the Lord would tell them, you're such a hypocrite, you break this law. You are not giving the support to your parents, but you justify yourselves with the money that you spent. You gave it supposedly as an offering. This you're lying and you're breaking the commandment because the Lord says you should give the offering to God as well as help your parents. And they were not doing either of those things. So the Lord continues to teach them in verse six. Then he need no honor his father or mother. How are you going to honor? They do not give them what is necessary. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. Hypocrites. Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you saying, these people draw near to me with their mouth. These people of Israel or this people of Jerusalem of Judah. And honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So the prophet Isaiah prophesied all of these things of what the people of Israel were doing, that they were not fulfilling the commandments of the Lord. And they did say that they believed in God, that they believed in God just as today it occurs to many persons whom say, I believe in God and I believe in the Lord and they call upon the Lord and anything they say, oh God, oh my Lord, and they call, but it is only with their lips, only saying it and their heart is far from God because they do not know the Lord. For they have never read the Bible and they have never experienced what it is to feel the presence of God in their heart because they have never called upon the Lord in truth, but only simply with words. This, that during that time was occurring of honoring the Lord only with their lips and their heart was far from God. This happens today as well with the people. This is why it is my invitation, the invitation of which I always say, and I repeat it over and over, to read the Bible, to be able to begin to know the Lord, to be able to begin to know how to pray, to honor God, to glorify Him. And that way, the Lord will be able to let Himself be known to men and women. So these men and women, when they call upon the Lord, they will no longer do it with only with their lips, but with a sincere heart, because they have known the God of glory. Just as we, we, many of us have known the Lord. We are knowing his path, his will, and we honor and glorify him with our heart. And the Lord manifests among us. And he gives us of his Holy Spirit, his gifts. He does miracles, marvels, signs in the midst of us because we have known him and we are doing so with our heart. I repeat, that is my invitation to all of those whom have not known the Lord and say, what do I do to know God? Very simple. Do what I just taught and you will see that you will know how to know God just as we know him today. Thanks be to his name. And in verse number nine, and in vain they worship me, says Jesus Christ. In vain they worship me, teaching us doctrines, the commandments of men. And what was this they were teaching? That before, that every time that they would eat or drink something, that they would have to wash their hands. This was one of the traditions, one of the many traditions that they had made up during that time. And the Lord Jesus was not approving of this and saying that they were teaching doctrines of men, commandments of men before fulfilling the will of God. This is how today as well, these superstitions and traditions, things that people make up, foods, drinks, the specific days, holidays, special days, days of which they dedicate to certain men and women, saints, 
So the people say, oh, we have to eat a certain food on a special day because it is the day of this saint or that saint. So it is the same thing with these traditions. This of our ancestors, traditions of men, and the heart is far from God. The same thing is happening today. He that reads the Bible say, oh, this is just a story that happened. No, it happened in that time, and it occurs as well today with many people dedicated to call the Lord, but without having him in their heart, only thinking of traditions and in all that man creates, superstitions and all of these things that do not take us to anything good. And people live enslaved to this and they occupy their time with this. And this is why they do not have time to think of the Lord or and meditate or think upon the true Lord. And they don't even worry on if truly they are heard by God or not. If the Lord is listening to them or not, they don't worry of this. They think that simply with a prayer or calling upon him, it's sufficient. But they don't say, well, I call and pray and think and ask and the Lord never hears me or answers me. No one thinks about this, but we are analyzing this and we are realizing that when we pray to the Lord and ask him something, he answers, he responds, he manifests, he blesses and fulfills our wants and needs. Thanks be to the Lord. This is the invitation to you all, those that do not know the path of the Lord. Here, let us continue with verse 10. When he called the multitude to himself, the Lord Jesus calls a multitude and says, Hear and understand. Now what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth, that defiles a man. The Lord was referring to that when they were criticizing him, and when they ate or drank without washing their hands, he was eating with bacteria, probably. And the Lord says, it is not what enters the mouth is what defiles, but it is what comes out of the mouth that is what defiles a man. If someone eats without washing their hands, nothing happens. But if someone has in their heart wickedness and want to do harm to another, that does defile. It defiles the spiritual life. So let us continue reading in 12. The Lord gives the explanation. Then his disciples came and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this saying? And the Lord answers, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. So if these Pharisees and these scribes were offended because I told them, that we have to honor mother and father and they were honoring the Lord simply with their mouth and not their heart if they were offended, meaning that they were not with God, that the Lord does not have them in his thoughts nor in his plans because they're rebellious, because they're unbelieving, because they're enemies of the truth of God. And they were angry and they left because they are not children of God. This is why it says that every plant which my father is not planted will be uprooted. They are these persons, plants that God has not planted. This is why they're rebellious. This is why they're stubborn, criticizing and judging the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord says in 14, let them alone. They are blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind leads the blind, both will fall into a ditch. Truly, this a person whom does not have God or doctrine in his teaching and guiding another, then both are blind and the both will go into confusion and mistaken paths into ignorance because neither of the two have the knowledge, have the truth. So the blind cannot guide the other blind, giving us the clarity that neither one had the Lord. How will they guide the other to be with God, to know God, if they themselves are living in their unbelief without accepting the word of the Lord? Today, the same happens. Today, they are blind, guiding the blind in the spiritual aspect regarding the doctrine, regarding the knowledge of the Lord. So a blind who is ignorant, speaking of false doctrines, mistaken out of the Bible, what can he teach another person? Nothing. They are both in ignorance. They both are in the path of mistakes. 
So what is the true path then? How do we learn? The Bible. The Bible is the truth. It is the book in of which we begin in initiating this path of knowing our Lord. But let us continue with the reflection. 15. Then Peter answered and said to him, Explain this parable to us, because we don't understand what defiles man. What is this that defiles man? That enters into the mouth doesn't defile, but what is in the heart? What is that? So Jesus said in 17, Do you not yet understand that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and is eliminated? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they defile a man. What is this? What comes out of the heart then? And the Lord Jesus Christ says in 19, For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murderers, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies, I'm going to add a few things, envy, grudges, greed, envy, covetousness, to commit murder, kidnapping, to rape, lies, deceit, being a hypocrite, etc., etc. All of these things is what comes from the heart. And it corrupts mankind. It corrupts other persons. Because these things, those that practice all of this, they harm themselves because they destroy, they separate from God and lose eternal life. And among all this as well, they harm their neighbor, their loved ones, doing harm with all of these things that flow from the heart, all of these evil thoughts, their actions all these wrongful things and all this harms and defiles and destroys and produces pain and ruin destruction and it produces unhappiness seals the peace and one day as well you lose eternal life as well so in verse 20 reads these are the things which defile a man but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man so here the lord giving this great teaching the pharisees and as well the scribes they were not in agreement with the teaching of the lord but they wanted to continue with their worldly sins and their life but we today in this reflection we realize that from the heart is what flows the heart comes good and bad hopefully from our hearts all that flows let it be good things love humility patience mercy modesty truth that good works flow values well manners responsibility being honorable fairness that all these things beautiful flow from our heart so that we ourselves be edified and our neighbor this is the invitation and these are the thoughts that we should reflect on today so that we can turn away change those that know upon the lord and turn away from all those evil and displeasing things and those that do not know of the lord as well to invite you to begin to understand and comprehend the path of the lord because the path of our lord is righteous it is righteousness and its believers those mankind that follow him have to be just as well merciful and to practice righteousness so this is what we today will be reflecting upon asking of our lord to help us to help us to change our lord to help us to understand and comprehend and do as well i desire brothers and sisters that the lord be with you all that he extend his hand of power blessing you all let us pray and then we shall sing chorus 127 with title advocate with the father so that you as well will sing with your heart and let us pray to our lord holy father thank you lord we thank you heavenly father for your love for your compassion and your truth you are our creator and our owner you are the giver of life you are our divine doctor 
You are the one that governs the world, nature, the universe. You govern us. You are our king, our comfort, our hope. You are our refuge. We find support in you. You are our strength. We hide in you, O Lord. So never leave us or abandon us, eternal Lord. Father, hear our prayers. Hear our pleas, eternal Lord. We ask, O Lord, for all of the men and women that have an illness, that have incurable diseases, every incurable disease, all those that have internal organs, problems from the head all the way down to their feet, that you extend your hand upon each one, every man and woman that call upon you, that ask of you for a healing, that you heal them. As well, O Lord, we pray and call upon you to rebuke witchcraft and sorceries, spells, because there is a great deal of witchcraft and sorcery. All these persons that work these evil things to do harm to another, even those that know upon the Lord, the devil wants to come to do harm with these spells and curses, with these evil spirits. We ask, O Lord, that you extend your hand and rebuke the devil, rebuke the enemy, rebuke evil spirits, all these spells, remove all these powers on these persons that practice all these things, my Lord. Put them to shame, Holy Lord. Deliver, my Lord. Cleanse each one, O Lord. This virus, O Lord, our spirits, rebuke them, O Lord, and do not allow that they continue advancing and continue removing lives and stealing the peace to all mankind, to all the people. Extend your hand and do miracles and signs. Lord, let it be you delivering and helping all those that have an illness. All these people who cannot coordinate their ideas, Deliver, bless each one, O Lord. Thank you, eternal Lord. We ask all this in the glorious name of Jesus Christ, your beloved Son. For he be the glory, the honor, and the praise forevermore. Amen. Glory to the Lord. Let us sing the chorus 127, Advocate with the Father. That goes. Abogado tenemos en Cristo, el Santo Hijo de Dios, el Justo, que con su sangre preciosísima nos rescató del mal. Si alguno hubiere pecado, en redes de Satanás caído, alcanzará por fe en Cristo la propiciación total. Abogado tenemos en Cristo, el Santo Hijo de Dios, el Justo, que con su sangre preciosísima nos rescató del mal. Si alguno hubiere pecado, en redes de Satanás caído, alcanzará por fe en Cristo la propiciación total. Glory be to the Lord. Blessed is the name of the Lord. Thank you. May God bless you. I love you with all of my heart.